uh, won't be going online really until uh, probably early January 1994. Uh, there are financial commitments to that jail that will have to be paid in 93. So at the moment, uh, Cape Elizabeth is looking at a 39.69% uh, increase in the uh, county assessment. Uh, this would be based on a property valuation of $646,050,000. Uh, compared with last year, it is an increase of $134,371, which is uh, quite a large amount. Um, I, guess, I guess that's the bad news. The, the good news is that of the, the 25 uh, municipalities in Cumberland County, uh, Cape Elizabeth really uh, came out better than 22 other uh, municipalities from the point of view of the percentage of tax uh, changes, at least as proposed right now. This is not final. Uh, this is the draft proposal that uh, uh, was released uh, about a week ago, and, and certainly representing District 2, uh, myself and, and uh, Jim Sewell and Janice Labreck, uh, we three represent District 2 on the uh, Budget Advisory Committee. We will do, we'll be doing everything in our power to uh, shave that down and, and pare down uh, a variety of increases, but uh, I did want to prepare people that with the jail this year we are going to be facing, uh, when all is said and done, a substantial increase over last year. So, having, uh, having said that, the only other point I'd like to make is that this weekend uh, the uh, state had its uh, typical Columbus Day soccer tournaments and uh, all of the Cape Elizabeth teams that participated in the uh, tournaments did extremely well. We're very proud of them all. Uh, in particular, the U14 boys team uh, were the runner-up and received the silver medals uh, in their division with a uh, a loss of a score of one to zero. So congratulations to all those who participated in the uh, Columbus uh, weekend uh, soccer tournaments. Thank you. I'm glad we could finish you with a positive note there. <laughs> Any other reports from counselors? Yeah, I do have a few. I will draw to the citizens' attention that in the latest Cape Courier, which I believe came out last Saturday, there is the schedule for fall pickup by our Public Works Department. In the past, that has been done. You call in and they will come. <laughs> this year, we're trying it on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis to stop the redundancy of the trucks going down the same road more than one or two times during the week. And as I said, that schedule is in the Cape Courier. If you have any questions about it, please call the Public Works Department. I'm sure they'd love to have those calls come in. But it will be different, and we're hoping this will make that operation more efficient for everybody. I do have a thank you letter from Portland Mayor Charles Harlow. A number of the councilors and other citizens attended a showing of support for Portland when the selection committee for the AA baseball team was in town recently. He writes, Dear Janet, this letter is to express a sin sincere thank you on behalf of the entire council to you and the baseball supporters from your municipality who attended the lunch at Hadlock Field last Thursday. The fact that you took the time and trouble to come to Portland was obviously not lost on the selection committee. As each municipality stood up to be recognized, the committee could see for themselves that this project has regional support. Thank you again for backing us in this effort. The fact that they selected Portland immediately after their visit is a testament to everyone who participated. Here's the fun part. I will do my best to see that you are all invited to opening day in April of 94. In the meantime, if you have a project for which you would like to have Portland support, please don't hesitate to call me. We will. <laughs> Maybe the water district right case. <laughs> I think we've already worn out our welcome on that one. We'll remind you that we have elections on November 3rd. One of the items on the ballot will, is question number nine, which is concerning unfunded state mandates. And as a town council, we have been very supportive to have this on the ballot. There was a lot of work done at the state level with main municipal association. There are information handouts about this. 
we do have these at town hall if you want more information than you you will see in the newspapers about question number nine on unfunded state mandates please be in touch with town hall and pick one of these up there's some good information and something I personally would encourage you to vote yes on to make sure that if the state is going to put a mandate in place that they put the money behind it otherwise you know what that does to our local taxes <coughs> enough of that have a press release that was put out by the International Association of Fire Chiefs announcing that our own chief Phil McGoldrick has been elected to first vice president of that association we certainly extend our congratulations to him and I have through Greater Portland Council of Governments recently been appointed to be one of the directors of the Greater Portland Economic Development Council. This is an organization that is a public-private joint venture of eight different regional organizations in the Portland area to carry out coordinated economic development activities to help retain and bring jobs to this region and looking forward to serving on that. I also want you to know that this week the Maine Municipal Association will be having its annual convention in Augusta and Mr. McGovern we're expected to be have him be nominated and elected as president of that organization very proud of him and know that he'll serve that group very well looking forward to that okay first item on our agenda this evening is a public hearing for Paputa Club liquor license and special amusement permit would you like to give us some information? I'm, I'm so used to looking <laughs> at the clerk. We're <laughs> Usually Debbie Pizzo handles, <laughs> handles these. Uh, this is the annual uh, liquor license and special amusement permit for the Paputa Club. Uh, it has been reviewed by the town clerk as, uh, and the police chief is aware as well. There have been no problems during the last <coughs> licensing period that we're aware of. Uh, Paul Hirsch, the president of Paputa Club, is here this evening should you have any questions, as well as Jim DiOrio, who's the manager of the club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody from the public like to speak to this? Any of you gentlemen like to speak? No. <laughs> Don't stay here. Okay. That being said, I will close the public hearing. I would like uh, Mr. Hirsch to come up to the microphone. I do have some questions. Hello. Hi. Would you just give us your name and address, please? Yeah, Paul Hirsch. I live at 53 Hunter Place, Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Do any other counselors have questions of Mr. Hirsch this evening? Okay. I'm more or less following along some of the concerns that were raised a year ago, and I think one of Councilor Coggeshall could not be here yet this evening. She shared some of her continuing concerns with me. So not just me <laughs> at this point can you just help me understand some of the operation of the club first of all can you tell me how many members there are on your board of governors there are seven members on a board okay how many of those um, are men and how many are women all seven are men alrighty and in your golf you have both golfing membership and social memberships correct is that right yes do you know how many golfing do you know the breakdown between those two can you tell me what that is there are 144 family memberships. Uh, Jim, could I have that list? I brought <laughs> it, anticipated. There are 144 family memberships, 183 single male memberships, four single male junior memberships, and 26 single female memberships. And that's for golfing, or is that yes. the, the whole thing? There are also uh, a total of 42 social golf memberships and 18 social memberships. Okay. If a family belong, okay. The family belongs only one member of that family can be a stockholder correct is that right can that stockholder situation change from one family member to another family member yes other than by death 
Yes, every October, every family membership has a chance to designate who the stockholder will be for the coming year. Do all your members know that? Yes. Because some I have, who have spoken to me with some of their concerns, I'm not sure that they were aware of that. Okay. If not, we can make it, and I think we have tonight, that every October they have a right to. That's when we have all changes of designations. If, if you want to change from a single to a family, family to a single, change stockholders, all uh, changes occur usually in October because that's the beginning of our fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you can imagine, the concerns that have been brought to my attention are um, the seeming lack of a balance between tea, tea times for women and for men that, from what I could um, glean from this, the, your women tea times, exclusive tea times are Thursday mornings. Yes. And men's are Saturday mornings. Correct. Um, as a working woman who works during the week. That wouldn't do me much good. <laughs> I, say, I, I hear that do my from my wife all the time. Yeah, I'm, I just, you know, I've had this concern. I you know there's nothing this council can do about that, but just to remind you that it is a concern. It's someone who, you know, has a part in approving your liquor license, hopefully tonight. I am not real comfortable with approving a license with a group that has that kind of discrepancy and apparent gender discrimination. Just want to be on the record to say that. And I know Councilor Cogsall apparently has heard from people too and share some of those concerns. I don't know about the male members of this council. <laughs> so be it. Any other questions or comments? No, I'm curious, as a member of the council, what all that has to do with the liquor license. It doesn't have a lot to do with it. It's one of Thank my you. uncomfortable situations and seeing more favors, presumably for one gender than the other and knowing that's been hit close to home in school situations like I would like a better example for fairness. Here's my pitch. Could I have a motion, please? You Sorry. have it. Full time. I would uh, move that we grant the full time liquor license. Second. And special amusement permit. Yes. And special amusement permit without any particular restrictions that I can see. Okay, thank you. Second on motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Six to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number 63 is to consider a report from the Recycling Committee regarding proposal for a returnable container program and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, do you have information or is yeah, there somebody you, else? Uh, Nancy Miles, the chairman of the Recycling Committee, is here this evening to present the report. Nancy? The Recycling Committee had received a uh, report which we looked at at our September meeting and it was based on a uh, discussion that the Council had um, at a meeting August 19th, I believe, um, responding to a request that the uh, town begin having a returnable container uh, program at the transfer station that would be run on a continuing basis and the proceeds each month would go to a different group in the town, um, primarily serving the youth of the town and for their charitable purposes. Um, the council at its August meeting handed this to the recycling committee to look at and review, and we were in support of it. Uh, we made some minor variations in how the selection process would be done. Um, but um, the groups would apply to the recycling committee and we would have a, a drawing if there were more than 12 groups for the 12 months who were interested in participating. Um, they would designate which months that they were um, able to do this. Uh, some groups are active in the fall, some in the spring. Um, and then we would uh, have a drawing to see which groups were chosen. Um, there is a volunteer coordinator and Rosemary Reed has agreed to be that person and certainly the recycling committee is in support of the concept and will coordinate it with our other recycling activities that are going on at the transfer station. Um, the responsibilities of the various groups, uh, the recycling committee would be charged with uh, developing the program outline and coordinating it with our other efforts. Um, sort of general oversight 
um, establishing the criteria for which groups could participate and would on an annual basis choose the groups that were involved. Um, the program coordinator's responsibilities uh, would be to work directly with the groups um, to make sure that things ran smoothly um, and to just to keep the program running on a week-to-week -week basis um, and coordinate that with the whoever was chosen. The responsibility of the participating groups, it's something that we really look for um, a lot of commitment from whatever groups are interested. Um, they're really going to be responsible for maintaining the collection, um, getting the, the bottles and <coughs> cans back to whatever redemption center is being used, keeping the place uh, picked up um, twice a week or more often if necessary, um, and taking care of the transporting and communicating with the coordinator what their receipts were on a regular basis. Um, and the Department of Public Works would be responsible for um, not the general cleanup of the area, but any maintenance that was needed and uh, to maintain any structure that was needed. It, we will need to move a, um, a building of some sort to keep this material dry, but that has been located and I think is available. Okay, thank you. Probably need to stay there for okay. questions. <laughs> Could we have a motion and then, well, if anybody has questions, does anybody have questions of Nancy at this point? Councilor Jordan. I have a couple of questions here, and it's mostly due to, and I presume you get these all figured out, is the time element as far as the one that comes in to clean up for that day, that week, uh, what have you. Do they get in after closing hours or do they get in before closing hours and stay until the last person is out? I presume this would be done during the regular um, hours that the transfer station um, was done, was open, and that, uh, that it would be done regularly enough so that on a day-to-day -day basis the place would be picked up. Who is, who is going to be the supervisor that this overall supervisor that is picked up and straightened out? Well, it'll be the responsibility of the, the groups, and there will be a coordinator designated from each group who's, uh, so if things aren't running smoothly, um, the, the overall coordinator, and Rosemary Reed has agreed to be that person, would uh, be there to check on it. Well, maybe it's just me, but I can see a situation like that get out of hand a little bit by different ones coming in to do the, collect their bottles and what have you. I know it'll start off good, but as time goes on, I think there'll be problems. And, and I just hope you have a strong supervisor in the future to do this. I think it's a great program, and I would like to see it work, but. We certainly are expecting the groups to take responsibility, and if they do not do a responsible job, they will not be participating in the future. So it'll be a, uh, up to the, an individual group to do a good job in the month that they are selected. Uh, Who is to make that decision, whether they did a good job or not? Well, I think if there are any complaints um, and they aren't dealt with properly, then uh, they'll come is back to the Is it the committee group. or the coordinator? Yeah. Well, I think the coordinator will be the, hearing the complaints, perhaps, but the committee can as well. I mean, we're going to be working together on this. Um, Who would have the final decision on that, to tell a group that they would no longer be eligible? I Probably the recycling committee, just because we've been designated to be the one responsible for the um, determining the who's participating okay. in the selection process. Anything else, Council Jordan? All set. Right, Any further questions for Mrs. Miles? Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Could we have a motion to get us started with discussion, please? I move acceptance of the proposal. Second. Thank you. Councilor discussion? Councilor Krillman. Well, I'd just like to thank Rosemary Reed. I think she. Uh, she really brought this issue to the fore and certainly has volunteered to be the, uh, the coordinator and I guess she's 
chopped off part of her house to be the shack or something you're going to put it all in <laughs> something's going to be moved from your yard or how's that going to work Councilor Crowman, it is not a shack, but it is a uh, <laughs> very well-maintained new standalone structure, um, and it has been uh, looked at by the um, uh, Director of Public Works, is movable at a minimal expense, and will be well-maintained. Okay. Great. And it is a volunteer position. If anybody's wondering if I suggested a position be created that I received money for, I just wanted to make sure the public knew differently. Yes, if I may, I have one more question, Madam Chairman. Of whom? Rosemary. Thank you. Uh, is, has it been figured out in advance that each individual group is going to be responsible for transporting their returnables? My understanding is the Recycling Committee has a list of rules and regulations that the head of the group has to sign and agree to before they are allowed to collect. So they will be very well aware in advance, and there'll be no surprises in the expectations of the Recycling Committee and the uh, Program Coordinator as Enforcer. Thank you. Okay, has there been any reaction from potential groups yet? Three groups who are not on the original list, Councilor Dahlbeck has asked to be, which is why the Recycling Committee, I think, has responded so well in uh, being open to additional. The original proposal was just to get people who were already organized in fundraising efforts and who had a direct impact on the tax right, rate, and that in committee changed uh, somewhat, but still the, the purpose is the same, which is to help the youth of the town. For the questions or comments, I just have some comments. You don't need to address them at this point anyway. I am very concerned that we're proposing to do something at the transfer station when we have not come to a resolution on the Thomas Jordan Trust situation. I would hate to approve something like this and have it come back against us in the future. And since we potentially, I don't know if we're in litigation still on this, or we're we have the potential potential, potential litigation. for litigation on our use of that transfer station as it relates to the Jordan Trust. I really don't think it's appropriate to be doing anything else in that area. And I, when I spoke to the manager about this before the meeting, I said, okay, we have the book swap in place now. I don't, you know, I wish I'd known, paid a little more attention before that went in probably, but I think in my mind, anyway, I can easily justify that that is to serve the poor of the town. The recycling, the returnable proposal before us tonight, I'm not sure I'm as easily able to justify that being used for the poor of the town. That's what I would not like to see come back at us. Another concern I have is what seems to be a proliferation of sheds going up there, and I'm you know, I have no concerns about the physical appearance of what is being proposed in the shed itself, but I don't know how the circulation is going to work with it, where it's going to be placed, and things like that. The information, I, if it was in here, I missed it. And I, I can just see other groups having an idea, okay, let's get another shed up there, and just seeing a whole bunch of sheds placed up there. I don't know if this has to go through site plan review, something like that, to make sure that the circulation is going to work properly. I also, there are some of your requirements that I didn't really think were the way I'd like them to be. One, if, if two groups, if you have two groups working at one month, it said the allocation of pro proceeds, the dis disputes about the allocation of proceeds would be resolved by the program coordinator. I think that would need to be resolved by the two groups. I don't think the town needs to get involved in that. And I just, you know, I think something, if we do proceed, something like that should be spelled out ahead of time. I see that there are a couple of places where it's listed that commitment of municipal resources, both under the jurisdiction of the council and the Department of Public Works. I don't think that this should be costing the town any money, and I don't know if it's going to. I think there's the potential. If we have to do maintenance on a shed, it's minimal, but I d really don't think that this kind of program 
should be costing the town money. I'm not real happy with that. So as it stands right now, I'm not, I know unless I hear more discussion to change my mind, I'm not comfortable with what's before us. I'm, I would say primarily because of the Thomas Jordan Trust situation. Councilor Pearson. <coughs> I was just going to, I wasn't going to say anything until that came up and I don't know what kind of grounds I'm stepping on, whatever, but I think that what was discussed earlier this week and I think uh, the town managers probably brought you up and I'll try to be careful in my wording is that in essence the land that was left in the Thomas Jordan Trust was forever to be for the use of the poor if in fact the town has used that land for the town's purposes I think the general feeling is the way that that use will be passed back to the trust is via rental of that property over the term over the years that it has been used. So I think that any additional use to that property is not going to create any problems with the Thomas Jordan Trust case. Uh, same as if I rented an apartment, I'm paying for that use. If I had a friend come in and run a business out of it, my landlord is not uh, able to get the proceeds or profits from that person's venture that I allowed to happen there. And I think the same thing will be done, so I don't think that's going to impede any of the proceedings that, potential proceedings that may occur because of the Town of Jordan Trust. Uh, I think that's something to do with the town. As far as the prolifer proliferation of sheds, I think the uh, uh, recycling committee brought that up very uh, clearly at the last meeting that they would like to have a long-term goal to put a building, one single building, to incorporate any potential future projects uh, dealing with recycling. At this time, until the Jordan Trust is situated, we can't do anything more permanent than the sheds. Uh, as far as costing the town money, I think that right now the present practice is that a lot of organizations, be it field hockey, or any of the sports groups, or any of the charity organizations, uh, currently conduct their bottle drives by driving to homes on Saturday afternoons with parents doing this, that, and the other thing. Uh, so I suppose in a, in a real pure sense, we could say that that's costing the town more money because it's more wear and tear on the roads, more uh, carbon monoxide and everything else. I mean, if you wanted to get real deep into the situation. I think this is a great proposal. It took a lot of volunteer work, and we're not going to know if it works until it's implemented. The longer we put it off, the longer we wait. And I think it's, it's time to just get things done and stop worrying about threats of litigation or all this other stuff. Let's get them done. It's good for all involved, and stop nitpicking around with minor details that may not amount to anything. And if they do, deal with it then. But right now, this is a proposal that's ready. We know what it is. Let's do it. So I'm for 100%. And that's that. Thank you. Mrs. Miles, I do have one question, if you could help me out with my understanding. Um, in the criteria for selecting the groups to participate, it says groups must agree that all proceeds shall be used for charitable, charitable purposes only. Can you help me understand what some of those purposes <coughs> might be? Well, this was wording that um, came from Mike McGovern to the committee, and so we've sort of adopted it. But in checking with him what the, that wording was, um, you know, it included... Um, I've forgotten exactly what your words were, but, but on the face of it, it was pretty easy to tell whether something was, was charitable or not, if it was benefiting um, something particularly that was uh, tax-supported or, um, in other words, people couldn't be making money off of it for their own personal gain or having a, a party with it or, uh, you know, doing something that was just benefiting a small group of people um, rather than a... Um, and I, I know it's, it's a, a word that we kind of stumbled over, but we just adopted because that's what we were, <laughs> were given to work with. Because okay, that um, is a word that I did stumble over, and knowing some of these groups and how they do operate and some of the expenditures they have, I'm not sure would qualify in my mind we'd be as happy charitable. To, we'd be happy to refine that in any way that people were comfortable. And it, again, it was not our, the committee's wording <coughs> as such. Um, so if there are better ways to describe it, um, we'd be happy to okay. put that in. Do you have any better words? <laughs> Nonprofit. <laughs> Nonprofit would be fine. Anything. Mm -hmm.
Mr. Dalbeck, Councillor Dalbeck, sir. Anything you'd like to. <laughs> He's the minister, you're the councillor. Uh, I, th I think this question is to you, Mike, uh, not being a lawyer, and none of us here are uh, uh, lawyers. Ha have you uh, reviewed this uh, use of, uh, of uh, the uh, refuse area uh, with uh, the town uh, attorney? Yes, essentially what uh, Councillor Pearson just explained is the town attorney's position. Uh, that. Uh, we're already using the property anyway, that this small addition would not substantially change the use of the property. And if there are any payments to be made uh, for the use of the property over the years and in the future, that this would not uh, in, in any way change the amount of uh, those, uh, those amounts that would expect to be paid. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Creelman. Yeah, I think I might uh, agree with uh, my colleague on the left this evening. Um, the, uh, as I see it, I, I see it as that we're, uh, we're satisfying uh, and complying with the recycling uh, law that uh, is now state mandate. We've got to recycle a certain amount of materials by, uh, you know, such and such a time. And uh, gee, I, I guess, you know, if you listen to the debates last night, you know that anyone can sue anyone for anything. but. Uh, we're trying to discourage that kind of law, frivolous lawsuit, and I think that'd be a frivolous uh, lawsuit here when we're looking to recycle uh, containers to essentially provide assistance for nonprofit uh, school and community groups serving the youth of the town. I guess you could argue that they're if they're looking for money. They're poor, so they're the poor of the town. I, I don't have any problem at all. I'm going to vote for it tonight. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jordan. Oh, I'd just like to say that uh, I can't see how anybody, well, maybe I shouldn't put it that way because it, anybody will come up and disagree with you regardless whether it makes sense or not. But uh, this material is going to go up to that transfer station, a good portion of it anyway, whether it was in the hopper or in another bin. And if we can set another place there and, and make uh, a use of it, I can't see how the job and trust would interfere with that, let alone what is going on, going on there for 50 years or more, if not 60 years, as far as what the town has used it for. And to me, it's a lot better off, and it's a lot better looking up there now than it was 30 years ago when you'd drive up there at night and the rats would overtake you if you wasn't careful. So, I think that the town has moved forward and what have you, and I think anybody, if they make a summer, yes, they're going to come out to the town and get every penny they can. No question about whether you do anything or not. So I think we should move forward and let the uh, school projects, uh, athletic projects, uh, programs, uh, see how they do, see how they make out. I know they always come into my place to get the ones that I hold up, and uh, I save them for them, so maybe I can take them up there and they can get them there, but uh, I'd like to see how it go, and I'd like to see it work, and give them something to do, maybe stop somebody from riding around after school, they might have sought out bottle. Thank you, sir. Any further comment? I do support the concept. I wholeheartedly support your concept. I'm not comfortable with some of the details. That's why I'm not going to vote in favor of it tonight. Could we have a, a vote, please? All those in favor? Opposed? Five to one. Thank you. Item number 64 is to consider a request from the Cape Elizabeth School, School Board to authorize an application for state school construction assistance for a special project at the Pond Cove School and take any necessary action. Do we have a representative from the school board to introduce this for us? Good evening. Connie Goldman, the superintendent. I think you've got to get that down more, Connie. A little. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always afraid of breaking it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. This 
is a project similar to our an application process, similar to what I brought to you in April. Um, you may recall that just about a year ago, uh, the school space study committee came forward with its report. We had a shared town council and school board meeting uh, with a presentation of that report, uh, which highlighted not only issues of space, but also the condition of the school buildings. And at that time, we stated very clearly that both the middle school and Pond Cove had severe problems. Uh, the state has two opportunities to apply for uh, state-assisted construction, one in April for the so-called major projects and the middle school building project uh, is in that category, and then one in October, something called a special project, which simply means that there's a limitation of 8,000 square feet. Uh, we also do have, uh, in the Pond Cove situation, a portable structure which is linking uh, Lunt School and Pond Cove School, and so this application also mentions replacing that. That's a somewhat different vehicle for state construction, but I thought we could put it together and let the state help us sort out if, if there's any hope of our getting any help. You probably also recall that the middle school project was rated uh, so low on the list that I came back to you in, I think it was a month ago, I sort of lost track here, but um, with the school board recommendation for a town council and school board building committee, uh, since it seemed as if the state was not really going to be able to help us with our problems. Uh, I can't guarantee, of course, what uh, kind of response we will get on this one. It is a somewhat different proposal because the state does mandate, speaking of unfunded mandates, uh, that there be a physical education program for children, and we are running uh, in our grades uh, one through four physical education program in a building that lacks a proper space facility. It also uh, is a uh, real problem for us in the various assembly or music-oriented programs. Uh, that are also forced to compete with space with our, gymnast our, our gymnasium program as well as the fact that the cafeteria serves uh, almost 600 children now in grades one through four. Uh, so it is possible that the state will look at this as a need that comes in under program need uh, and not just from a space need. One of the reasons we were rated so low uh, which is 36 out of a, a list of 54 with the state funding about four projects this year, was that we are uh, technically on paper, at least, we have enough square footage to house our students. In other words, we don't have 10 or more portables sitting outside our buildings uh, taking up slack. Those are the projects that get the highest percentage point, uh, the highest number of points as the state reviews these. Uh, so I, uh, putting the packet together and, and um, sent you a, a little bit of information previously just to spell out what this is and told you that the packet is uh, identical or virtually identical with a little bit of updating uh, with facts and figures taken from the school space study and also uh, baseline enrollment data and so forth, uh, which was the backup for the packet that we sent in in April. I've given you tonight a copy of the entire packet. Uh, should you uh, vote to uh, give your approval to um, back this proposal, I do have a cover sheet. I, I think we gave it to uh, the town clerk. Perhaps you have it. Good. I, could, I was happy to give you this one if you needed another one uh, so that we would be able to put that in, um, in the mail and get it up to them on time. Be happy to answer any questions. <coughs> Thank you. Are there questions from any counselors? Connie, I have a question. Do you ha is there a financial amount associated with this that I just couldn't find here? It's not part of the application project here, but yes, we had uh, the renovations to the Pineco building, um, plus the addition of a proper gymnasium, uh, some modification to existing spaces, were estimated to be in the th in the somewhere around two two and a half million. But that's a very loose figure, and again, we're not talking about uh, pinning that down for referendum purposes at this point. But we want to know if we can get any approval from the state, we'll come back and get a tighter figure for local purposes. Okay. Councillor Cogsall um, wanted me to ask if there's going to be any work done on, would there be any work done with roofs associated with this? 
Well, I had all the rules checked when within the few first few months that I came in because of the situation, um, and there there were some small pieces that need to be strengthened. There was one that was strengthened. I believe we've already completed that work. None of them, uh, again, falling into a dire safety problem. Just one of those things that to bring it into uh, compliance with code work. Less so at the Pond Cove building, however, than at the middle school building. So. There would, there's no particular roof work being requested? Well, the renovations at Pond Cove are, are substantially uh, in line with the renovations we're asking for for the middle school, except the middle school happens to be in worse shape. Pond Cove also has a very antiquated heating system, one which cannot be uh, simply patched together. It is going to have to be replaced. You may recall that we pointed out to you that there's a uh, the boiler that is in the little separate building over there at the end of the middle school where we put right next to the bus garage. Uh, there's a line that goes between that building and Lunt building. Um, there's, it's, it's just a whole bunch of things that uh, one thing, it's like a domino effect. You can't just patch up one small piece. Uh, the window wall systems in Lunt are badly in need of repair. Uh, we have some very uh, antiquated bathrooms. Um, the essential structure of the, especially the original Pine Cove building, uh, is pretty sound. And it's only a one-story building. When you look at the middle school, you're looking at two places, one with three stories and one with two stories. Actually, two or three pieces with more than one story. But we have, uh, Lunt Building has two stories. There are multiple handicap access problems. Lunt Building, for instance, is totally, uh, the second floor certainly is totally inaccessible to handicap. Um, there are, the, the reason for putting this in with the focus on a programmatic piece, the 8,000 square foot project is always bears a smaller price tag than major renovation. Most of that renovation is going to be a local issue anyway. The fact of the matter is uh, we don't have a proper space for our one through four gym program. We simply don't. And there's no way that we can stretch the one uh, gymnasium that we have, K-8, to allow the numbers that we have to make use of that space. So that we are putting this in under that state uh, pipeline that says if you do not have proper program space, this is a way for us to try to get them to look at it from that point of view. And if they do not, if we're number 35 out of 34 <laughs> applications again, <laughs> which is how I feel we were the last time, what, what would be the school, what would be your recommend, recommendation to the school board about um, overcoming that programmatic need? I think it certainly needs to be done. I mean, it's inadequate as it is. Now, at the timeline for doing that is not mine to determine that. It's obviously why we have building committees and deliberations of one kind or another. But there is no way we're going to have proper space for a proper gymnasium program with what we have. I remember very well the inadequacies there when my children were in that building. And I know that you have prioritized, and I'll say you, and I'm looking at Charlie, and the school board members also, <laughs> saying that you have prioritized. And you know, cooperatively, we've done that in saying the middle school is the one most in, in most dire need of correction. I just, I think there will be citizens who are wondering, saying, OK, so this goes to the state. It comes back. The state says no. When does this hit us on our tax bill is what it comes down to for a lot of people. Well, I think last month we talked about the building committee, and I believe uh, very properly you people brought up the whole issue of a master plan. Uh, for most purposes, the space school space study committee report is uh, a master plan. As far as the uh, two of our three school buildings, and there was some uh, attention during that process to the condition of the high school, but of course that's only a 20-year building, so that one uh, is much more manageable for us on a year-to-year -year basis. But the other two buildings uh, have serious deficiencies, <coughs> some of them uh, from the standpoint of just plain energy efficiency and so forth, um, but again, the heating systems in both buildings are really antiquated. Uh, the Pond Cove, less so than the middle school, but only marginally less so. I will totally agree. Thank you. Other questions? Council George? Just one question. Uh, <coughs> portables that link the Lent School and the Pond Cove School, that has to be replaced? 
Eventually, yes. I mean, Eventually, yeah. but I mean, is that a state requirement that it be? It's required? both, I believe, a local requirement. I think the planning board asked the school committee to come up with a deadline or some kind of a, a suggestion for how we would replace them. And uh, it is my understanding that the state is very anxious for those to be replaced. However, they don't have the money to just, you know, hand it out and replace it. Um, it is actually uh, a piece that we absolutely need in order to run our programs. Our library is there, plus the, some of our special uh, services are located in that, that temporary building. Um, so we certainly can't just not use it. Um, and it is, um, uh, as long as we have anything like the numbers of students in those grade levels, we will have to have that space. Thank you. Any other questions from counselors? Thank you. I would like a motion on this item, please. Yeah, I move we authorize the application. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? 6 0. Thank you. We will sign it for you this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Item number 65, to consider the sale of two town-owned lots, Trundy Road lot U12-4A and High Bluff lot U04-25, and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, do you have a yes, few couple, words? A couple of months ago, you authorized a bid process uh, for these two lots. The bid process has been completed. Uh, there was one bid for each lot. It did, each bid did meet the minimum requirements. Uh, in both cases, the lots would be, would be purchased if you approved it by abutters uh, to the lots. I would uh, encourage you to authorize me to uh, execute the quit claim deeds upon their satisfactory completion uh, by the town attorney. Thank you. Could I have a motion, please? I would move authorization. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Questions? All those in favor? All those opposed? 7-0. Thank you. I would like to propose that we take item 67 out of order. All so those moved. Second. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Item 67 is to consider the warrant for the November 3rd, 1992 general election and take any necessary action. We have this on our agenda this evening, but we don't have the warrants. The state has not forwarded the warrants for the general election, rather than us having a special meeting later this month to approve the warrant. We want to do that approval tonight based on the council being able to review the warrant when it does come in. If there are any questions and concerns at that time, we could reconsider the vote if need be, and then just Councilors may stop in at town hall at their convenience and sign the warrant. Yeah, the, the warrant will be the standard warrant that the polls will open at 7 a.m. at Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, we'll close at 8 p.m. in accordance with state law. Uh, Deborah Pisa will be the clerk. Uh, Henry Adams will be the warden. Thank you. Are there any questions on that? No, right. If I may, Madam Chair, my only question is the legality of doing this in advance. You feel there's no problem? No. I have checked with the town clerk about this. We talked last week about whether or not we could do it this way, and she did not see any legal ramifications. That's all I needed. I have one question. Yes, uh, what is the state law with respect to the uh, distance that any political signs can be um, erected uh, with regard to how close to the polls. What is the measurement on that? Has there been any change between uh, this election and the last election? No, there, there has not been any change, but the clerk does go out and measure uh, the distance from the entrance to the polls to the signs and does ask candidates to remove them uh, if they are in place. Uh, the sign restriction does not apply to signs on moving vehicles going to and from the polls merely on signs placed in the grip. I think it's 250 feet, but I, I would want necessary. someone to check with the clerk. But it used to be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further questions on this? 
Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? 7 0. Mr. McGovern? I have another item you'd like, I'd like to have you take out of order. Every so often, we, we look in the records to see if we, you have formally authorized us to do business with a certain bank. And we have a little card that People's Heritage Bank wants us to sign. We put an investment of $95,000 there uh, a week or so ago, uh, which is under the $100,000 insurable limit. And we, they sent us a card saying that, needed, that the Board of Directors needed to authorize the opening of accounts at that bank. And while certainly you've authorized to do, us to do business with People's Heritage before, in order to fill out this card, uh, we need an updated uh, date of when you authorized the Debbie did check on Friday for the last two years, couldn't find it in the record, so would hope that perhaps you might take an item out of order authorizing the town to do business with uh, People's Heritage Bank. Second. Second. Those in favor? Thank you. We will have item 68, which would be the town council authorization to open an account with People's Heritage Bank. Any discussion or concerns with that? I'm glad it was brought to our attention before we get any further along then. <laughs> <laughs> I think you authorized it at some point. We, we, we just can't. We just can't that. find it. No, no, she didn't, it was easier to get a new approval than to keep digging through the records. No, you think so? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Could we have a motion, please? I think it's been moved and seconded yeah. and passed. Oh, I thought we had moved to take it out of order. No. Yeah, to take an item out of order. Okay. Now we need a motion. So moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? All those opposed? 7 0. People's Heritage Bank. Thank you. Something else to sign. Okay. We are going to consider entering executive session. And before we do that, I would like to propose that we take out of order any citizen discussion. Just would like to mention one thing before we adjourn. Uh, we we haven't received from the state the warrant for the for the general election as has been mentioned. Nor have we received absentee ballots. Uh, we're quite concerned about that because there's people asking for ballots from overseas. It's very doubtful at this point whether or not they'll get there and get back. Uh, to our knowledge, no community in the state has received absentee ballots. Uh, Deborah is very active with the Clerks Association and plans to, uh, particularly after the election, uh, vigorously uh, encourage the state to set a deadline as to when absentees need to be made available. But you know, unfortunately, at this point, this, people could be disenfranchised as a result of the state's lateness. And uh, an, an additional problem is a lot of people coming in to vote absentee, and because the ballots on here, we're incurring the expense now of having to send them absentee ballots instead of them coming in to vote absentee. So uh, for anyone who's watching, uh, this meeting is on the evening of October 12th. Uh, we do hope to receive the ballot sometime between now and the end of the, the week. But uh, I, I would, you know, if you're going to be in town between, uh, if you're going to leave in the next week and not be back before election day, you ought to come in this week and get an application for an absentee, and we'll send it to you. Uh, if you're going to be in town uh, sometime between now and election day, but not on election day, I'd encourage you to wait a week or so before you do come in and vote absentee. Hopefully the ballots will be in by then. Yeah, that, it really is distressing when that happens. It's out of our control. Thank you for briefing us on that. What's the reason for it? Anybody ask? The, the, there may be a number of factors. I think the primary problem is the state leaves the deadline uh, far too late as to when people can get off the ballot. And what happens is they have these, uh, you know, particularly legislative candidates think they file in April because they want someone to fill the ballot for one of the two parties, and the person doesn't want to run, and then they want to get off the ballot, and then the, the local committee needs to have a special caucus in order to put someone else on the ballot. And even though that situation didn't happen in Cape Elizabeth, it did happen in a, a, a great number of districts in the state this year. And, uh, you know, they just need to set an earlier deadline as to uh, when the ballot is set and uh, the names that are on it. So who should uh, push for that? The clerk well, or the town council? Or who should 
I would think all of the town councils, I would think anyone interested in making sure that uh, the greatest number of people can vote. Uh, you know, the problem, you know, it's, it's in the Secretary of State's office, uh, which Secretary of State is elected by legislators. Uh, so, the, you know, speak to your legislator. Say no more. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Montgomery. I do not see any citizens who would care to make <laughs> care to um, bring up any items on the agenda this evening. You're there. Fine. Our camera folk assure me they are under control for the rest of the evening. Therefore, I would like a motion on item number 66, please. Madam Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I move that we enter into executive session to discuss the request for a property tax abatement and to receive an update on property matters. I believe, a necessary I believe it's a poverty tax abatement. Poverty tax abatement. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? 7-0. We will be entering executive session. Thank you, camera folks. Before you move, do you want to get these signed? Yeah. We have three things to sign.